Okay, so today we're going to be taking notes and we are going to be learning how to read weather maps. So what you're going to need is this weather map um, piece of paper that you should have been given. You need ooh, a red and a blue colored utensil. I personally don't care if you use crayon, colored pencil, or marker. It's up to you. Glue, scissors, and then something to write with. So very first thing, you have this map. I'm going to trim it down so that I will have more room to write in my notebook. So I'm gonna cut the bottom blank part off. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this darker piece off the side. And I'm gonna cut off all the extra space up here at the top. This is pretty much all you need. Um, in your notebook, you are gonna need the left and the right side of the pages both blank. I'm gonna start by working on the left side. So I'm gonna take this right here and I'm going to actually glue it into my notebook so we can start writing our notes on top of it. Okay. I'm going to leave room for my title. Okay, so I've got that glued in. Put the cap back on your glue, please, so it doesn't dry out. And the first thing I'm going to add is a compass. So we're going to do an up and down line. We know on a compass, up is north, down is south. Then we're gonna do a side to side. This is east, and this way is west. Okay, so there's our compass. North, east, south, west. Never eat soggy waffles. That's how I learned it. Okay, so we have all these crazy patterns on here. We have some letters. This is all the stuff we're gonna start with. So on the left side, we're gonna talk about fronts. There's two types of fronts. You have warm front and cold front. So we're gonna start with warm front. So just down here with your pen or pencil, we're gonna write warm front. Now, um, as the name suggests, a warm front brings warm air. Typically, your warm fronts are going to start um, southeast of wherever you're at. And they're going to move in a westward direction. This is why we wrote the compass on our paper. So warm fronts bring warm air. They start in the southeast and move west. Now, where on our weather map exactly is showing us that? Well, this is what your warm front symbol is. Now it is red. Um, so like on the news, if you watch the news and you watch the weather on there or on your weather apps that are in color, it will be red, obviously, because it's warm. And you also have these little half circles, which I like to think of as half suns or like the sun coming up on the horizon because sun brings warmth. So we're looking for this symbol. Now, unfortunately, on a lot of the materials we use, they're black and white, so you can't look for the red. So what you'll look for for a warm front is these little suns. So there is one up here. So I'm going to go ahead and color code this for myself since we're just learning that this is supposed to be red. This is my warm front. And see how these little humps, our little suns, are actually pointing westward? These are gonna tell us what direction it's going. See, there's another one over here too. Go ahead and highlight that one. Okay, then the other kind of front we have is a cold front. So just like a warm front brings warm air, a cold front is gonna bring cold air. And these, direction-wise, start northwest and move east. Zoom in on this one. Okay, if you need to pause right here to make sure you have all of this written, go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to move on to the symbols. So, just how warm front was in red, cold front, we use blue. But instead of having little suns on our symbol, 
We have triangles, which I think of as the tips of icicles, because that helps me remember that the triangles are cold fronts and the circles are warm fronts. So then if we go up to our map, again, I'm gonna color code, go over these with blue, because I see the triangles. These are the tips of my icicles. I know these are cold fronts one over here okay so fronts show how the outside feels so this is how outside feels that's important so, our fronts are the lines on our weather map, but I noticed that we have some H's and some L's here on our weather map. So what we're going to do is move to the right side of our paper, and the H and the L, so a lot of people get confused and see H and they think it stands for hot, but it doesn't. Our fronts, these symbols over here, remember, are the temperature, how it feels outside. So um, temperature is shown by either your suns or your icicles right here. H and L actually stand for high pressure and low pressure. So we're going to start on this left side of the paper now. Um, and I'm going to draw my L in red because that's how you see it in color on a weather map if you're lucky enough to get one in color. So my L, this means low pressure. So what low pressure in your atmosphere does, or we call these low pressure systems, is these are what typically bring clouds or your precipitation, whether it's rain, snow, sleet, or hail, these come from low pressure systems. So we're gonna write that they typically bring clouds and precipitation. And then if you want to put in parentheses that this is your rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Okay, so how I, let me zoom in on this for you. How I remember this is whenever it's cloudy and raining or cloudy and snowing, it kind of like dampens my mood. And so I like to think of it as low pressure low mood. I just want to lay in bed. I want to watch movies. I want to stay in my pajamas all day. I don't really want to go out and do anything. I hate leaving the house. So low pressure puts me in a low mood. So we're going to move on to the H's that I saw over there. And our H's, we're going to do in blue. So remember, this does not have to do with temperature right now. Um, L is for low pressure, H is for high pressure. So these are opposites. Low pressure, remember, brings clouds and precipitation. High pressure, this is gonna bring your um, fair weather, clear skies. If it's during the daytime, it's gonna be sunny. So, High pressure typically brings fair and clear skies. Clear is really what I want you to think about um, because yes, if it's daytime, it's sunny, but sometimes if you're asked about nighttime, well, it's not going to be sunny, but it can be clear. This is whenever you can see the stars at night. So this is sunny day or starry night. So, same as how low pressure puts me in a low mood, I just want to stay in my pajamas and not do anything all day. When it's really sunny outside and it's pretty and the sky is clear, I want to be outside. I want to be doing stuff with my friends. I'm in the mood to come to work and see you guys. So, I think of high pressure 
as my good mood weather. So high pressure is gonna put me in a high mood. I am excited and I wanna leave the house and I wanna go do things. I don't wanna be cooped up inside all day whenever the weather is nice. So our fronts, if you remember, was how outside feels. Is it warm or is it cold? Our pressure systems, low or high, this is gonna be how outside looks. So low and high pressure, how outside looks, is it rainy, is it cloudy, like it would be for a low pressure system, or is it clear and sunny, how it would be in high pressure. Warm front is does it feel warm, cold front does it feel cold. Now at the bottom of this page, if you need to pause right here and catch up, go ahead and pause because I'm going to add two vocabulary words for you. These are just words that have to do with weather, they're both tools. Um, that I want you, sorry about that, to be able, just to be familiar with if you ever see them. So the first one is called a barometer. And my original video got cut off, so barometer. Um, this is a tool that we use to measure the atmospheric pressure. So we use a barometer to be able to tell exactly what low pressure we're looking at or what high pressure we're looking at. So we're going to write down here that a barometer is a tool we use to measure atmospheric pressure. So usually we can look outside, remember, and see if there's clouds or precipitation we know it's low or if it's clear fair, sunny, starry, it's going to be high, but uh, meteorologists need exact measurements of how low and how high is the pressure, so this is when they would use a barometer, so we're going to put here low or high pressure, just to make sure we understand what we're measuring. Then the next tool, let's zoom in on that for you guys, barometer, the next tool I want you guys to be familiar with is an anemometer, A N E. M-O-M-E-T-E-R, an anemometer, and this is a tool that we use to measure wind speed. So whenever you guys hear storm chasers or maybe on the weather and you, you, know, you hear wind gusts up to 13 miles an hour or if it's a really bad storm, you know, 40, 50 miles an hour, they're using anemometers to be able to measure how fast the wind is moving um, or to measure the speed of the wind. So this is a tool we use to measure wind speed. And this is the last thing that you have to write for your notes. So if you need to catch up, go ahead and pause here.